Assalamu alaikum fam, hope you're doing fantastic. We're continuing our reading of the tafsir of Asaudi and we're still in Surah Al Baqarah. We we're dealing with Ayat 177. So let's continue. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. And for the ransom of slaves, this includes manumission and helping others with it. Giving money to a maktib, okay, that's a new word. A slave with a contract of manumission so that he can pay off his master, ransoming captive Muslims from the disbelievers and paying ransoms in the case of those who are being held by evildoers. Okay, so look at that. Paying ransoms of slaves, helping Muslims become free of the disbelievers, and also people in general who are being held by uh, hostage takers. To establish prayer and give sakah. We have seen above that Allah, the exalted in might, often mentions prayer and zakat together because they are the best acts of worship. Yeah, we definitely, zakat charity is emphasized heavily and salah, definitely up there. For they are spiritual, physical, and financial. By means of them, a person's faith is certainly may be evaluated. Yeah, charity is definitely a sign of seeing someone's spirituality i mean jeff bezos just bought a 500 million dollar yacht i mean who jeez i hope he gives that much in charity who to fulfill the covenants you make a covenant means fulfilling that which allah has made binding okay so the covenant part fulfilling what oaths you made to allah what he's the duties he's placed upon us or that which one has made binding upon oneself. That includes all the rights of Allah, which Allah has enjoined upon his slaves, so that they have become binding and form part of the covenant. Hence, they are obliged to fulfill them. It also includes the rights of other people that Allah has joined upon them, and the obligations that an individual takes upon himself, such as oath, vows, and so on. Okay, so, obligations in so far as they don't violate your religion's rules right so that we muslims don't ever make an oath or a vow that would actually go against what allah has binded upon us so duty to allah and then fulfill what we've made as long as it doesn't transgress i think you're allowed to change your mind if circumstances change but that you can also work on not making oaths and vows that you don't intend to keep to be patient in the face of hardship, that is, poverty, because the poor man needs patience in many ways, as he is going through ongoing psychological distress and physical pain that no one else is going through. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, when you're poor, you need a lot of patience. A lot of patience. There's less alleviation for you materialistically, right? When he sees rich people enjoying that which is beyond his means, he feels distress. They like Cabo going around, partying, or even though the poor man may be a good Muslim, it's still weird when you see someone flamboyantly boasting. Even though you're, you have to work on not getting envious and stuff. If something is so distressful for your life, there can be some pain there. When he or his dependents go hungry, he feels distress. Almost definitely, right? I mean, if a man or a woman cannot provide for their children. It, it pains them deeply. If he eats food that does not suit him because he cannot afford anything else, he feels distress. Oh yeah, when I had the lockdowns, in the very beginning, you know, he was definitely changing what I could eat. But, you're thankful, but it is quite interesting when you're forced to eat different versus when you choose. It's It's quite intense. If he goes naked or almost naked, he feels distress. Oh yeah, because the shame. Well, today, you'd have hedonists. So they'd be like, yeah, free the nipple. But here, it's like, you can also put it in as ravaged clothes, like very dirty, you know, things with holes. You don't have a lot. So you will feel distress if someone is flexing upon you with your clothes, especially in a society that measures you by brands, right? When he thinks of his current situation and what he expects to face in the future he feels distress 
what he expects to face. You can't overly dwell on the future, right? You have to kind of have a balance there and realize you have a duty to maintain your suburb. But I understand what he means. He feels distress. When faced with cold that he cannot ward off, he feels distress. Yeah. Um, with the cold, yeah, I kind of... I can endure the cold better than I can endure the heat. So you can also flip that, right? When I can't get rid of the heat, if you don't have an air conditioner or a place to shade, or, you know, that's definitely distressing. Temperature fluctuations. All of these and similar calamities he is enjoined to face with patience. Seeking reward with the law and hoping for it. Yes, yeah, seek your reward with the law. Because Allah does reward the graciously patient, right? And adversity. This refers to sickness of all types, including fever, injuries, stomach ailments, and pain in any part of the body. Oh, that's interesting. So the adversity includes these elements. You see that? Look at that. So, like, I didn't even think of adversity in terms of, like, that type of adversity. I thought of it more as, like, an opponent. Even toothache or aching fingers and so on. That's cool. So adversity is just like any type of pain that takes away your peace, essentially. He needs to have patience in facing all of these things. Kind of like Job, right? Because he feels weak and helpless and is suffering physical pain that is very difficult to bear. Especially when it goes on for a long time. So he is enjoined to be patient and seek reward with Allah. So here again, look how Islam makes you just level up, right? You don't wallow in your pain. You're going to be patient. To take it. Endure. Take the pain. Take it. You feel helpless. You feel weak. These physical pains are causing you problems in your life. You need to face that adversity. And seek your reward with Allah. And Allah and Islam will reward you for being patient. That's powerful. So it's like. Islam encourages us to be strong. Not just trying to be woke victims all the time in a pity party. And in times of conflict, that is, times of fighting enemies whom we are enjoying to fight. Because engaging in physical fighting is very difficult. And a person may fear being killed, injured, or captured. So in this situation, he needs to be patient and seek reward with Allah. Hoping for reward from Allah, from whom come the help and victory that he has promised to those who are patient. Yeah, most definitely. And plenty of hadiths show this too. This is talking about the Quran, but also you can see quite clearly that if you're facing conflict, there's going to be risks, but you have to go on, you know? The injury part is, all you think about what soldiers face, losing limbs, losing feet, losing an eye. I mean, woo. The captured part is very scary too, because of how many people get tortured. It's very scary. Even like throughout history, all different types of regimes and like empires, what they did in the dungeons. Hooey, hooey, hooey. It's, it's, you almost would almost, now it's worse to get captured, I think, because of what they'll do to you. You get injured, you might escape, you get killed, you're out of the dimension. But being captured, it's like, oh boy, that one is, it's hard. It's very scary. Whew. Good to be patient. Such, that is, those who have the characteristics mentioned above, such as correct belief and good deeds. Okay, so correct belief, good deeds, that are a result of proof of faith. So, if you want to see if someone has proof in their faith, you look at, is their beliefs correct? Are they doing good deeds? And good manners that reflect the dignity of the individual and the essence of true humanity. Okay, so the mannerisms. Look at that. So if you just got really bad manners, you're vulgar, you're still acting like a gangster, you don't practice the Islamic mannerisms, well, you're not really doing your true essence of humanity in an Islamic fashion. Such people are true believers who are sincere in their faith because their deeds are a confirmation of that faith. Okay, so you're a true believer and that will be shown by your sincerity and your deeds. So the 
sincerity breeds the deeds, which is tied to your faith. So if you have faith, you'll be sincere. When you're sincere, your deeds will show it. And then that'll be a confirmation of your faith. Very logical. Very straightforward. And such are the pious, because they have given up what is forbidden, and have done what is enjoined. Look at that. That's how he boarded that. So you are pious if you give up what is not allowed, and have done what is enjoined. So the enjoined, remember the fulfilling of the oaths of what Allah has binded upon us, and also keeping our word in terms of what's permissible to make an oath. And these qualities inevitably include all good characteristics, fulfilling covenants under all Islamic teachings, the act of worship mentioned is a verse or the greatest acts of worship, and the one who does them is more likely to do others. Yeah, I mean, if you started one, right, you're going to breed the deeds of such good behavior, and if it becomes accustomed to you, it'll be like clockwork, right? Such are the righteous people who are sincere and pious. Wow, that is beautiful. Perfect. Yes. We know that Allah has connected to these matters of reward in this world and in the hereafter. But this is not the place to discuss that in detail. Okay, so in this world and in the hereafter, you'll be rewarded for your, your piousness, your confirmation of your faith, your sincerity. And then by amplifying and sticking towards the essence of true humanity. And then that dignity will definitely reflect in your mannerisms and prove to others of your sincere faith. So staying strong in conflict and adversity, and then adversity included ailments of the body, uh, which was pretty cool because that's another way to think of diversity. So very interesting, fantastic.